You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories for you right now. And topping the list tonight, the youngest people in our community could soon be able to get vaccinated against COVID-19 if regulators give the green light. Right now, Pfizer is asking for emergency use approval for extra low doses of its COVID vaccine for children under the age of five. Now, the Knox County Health Department's lead epidemiologist is looking forward to what the federal agency decides and shedding some light now on transmission in the young age group it's trying to protect. Well, we started seeing last year, you know, particularly with the Delta variant um, around the end of last summer, that it really, that it, we saw more cases in kids. And so I think that especially given Omicron's more transmissible, you know, features, that um, it's really not too surprising to start seeing it in in every age group, you know, and to start seeing it in our in our kid, in our young kids. Dr. Tandy is also encouraging parents to talk to their pediatrician about vaccination. If it is something you're considering for your child and if the FDA approves Pfizer's request, children as young as six months could get a vaccine and experts say this age group could start getting vaccinated by next month. We'll keep you posted. And if you still are in need of a vaccine, the Knox County Health Department and Remote Area Medical are now hosting a COVID-19 vaccine clinic. It will be next Friday, February 11th. The clinic starts bright and early at 630 in the morning. The Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer vaccines as well as boosters will be available for those eligible. Just head to the Jacob Building near Zoo Knoxville. All right, let's take a look at the Knox County Health Department's weekly COVID-19 update. We should remind you these numbers are from last week's totals, and they are reporting 30 new COVID deaths, which means a total of 1,160 Knox County residents have died from the virus. Active cases are down by several hundred from last week, but this number is still one of the highest that we have seen since the pandemic began. But there is some good news here. While the number of cases being reported each day is still high, it is starting to go down. Of course, be sure to join us right here next Wednesday for this week's latest numbers. Next on the Big 7, the search continues for two-day-old Kennedy Hoyle. She was reported missing after her mother was found dead overnight. The TBI issued an Amber Alert for the two-day-old this morning. The baby was last seen with her mother, 27-year-old Danielle Hoyle. Now, the family says Danielle left home around 6 o'clock last night to take her daughter back to the hospital for some testing, but never returned. Memphis police then found Danielle's body and her car abandoned. Memphis police began searching along the Mississippi River this morning, but have yet to locate the infant. Police have also detained a man they say is known to the victims. His identity, though, has not yet been released. If you have seen this little girl, though, or know anything that can help out investigators, you are asked to please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. In our next Big 7 story, officials are investigating after a burned body was found in Granger County. Morristown police officers made the grisly discovery while investigating reports of a suspicious vehicle near Cherokee Lake just off of Highway 11. Documents say a silver Mazda that had been parked in the lake bottom area for days. Officials identified the vehicle as belonging to a missing person from Morristown. Police report states that while investigating the vehicle, a canine officer located the burned body nearby. The remains have now been sent to the Knoxville Forensic Center for autopsy and identification. Next here on the Big 7, we're learning more about a deadly crash along Salem Church Road near Halls. Rural Metro Fire says someone had crashed right around 3.40 this afternoon, hitting a utility pole and a house, flipping and then landing the vehicle on its top with the driver still inside. That driver, who has not been identified, was pronounced dead at the scene. What caused the crash has not been released yet. We are told the Knox County Sheriff's Office, though, is now investigating what happened. We'll, of course, update you with what they find. Next in the Big 7, animal control in Blunt County sees more than 60 cats from a Maryville cat rescue. Authorities say they found the cats in what they describe as deplorable conditions at the kitty camp. This is in the Onwick Community Center just a few weeks ago. Now, right now, the cats are being treated for their illnesses, including ringworm and cancer at the Blunt County Animal Shelter. About five cats, we understand, have died. Staff at the shelter say they've had to open a separate room for the rescued cats. And the load, well, it's putting, a, putting additional strain on the shelter. This has been physically and mentally draining um, on myself and staff, especially the vetting staff. It's, it's financially draining because of the, the medicines and the medications it takes almost an hour and a half every day to do the medications just for these cats. Lemons adds now is a great time to volunteer at the Blunt County Animal Shelter and we'll show you the full rescue story. That's coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. So join us then. 
Next here on the Big 7, a Knoxville man showing gratitude to those who came to his aid. 76-year-old Joe Kologi went from having a, a normal day to experiencing a frightening moment. He tried to stand and his knee gave out. He reached for a bookcase and it ended up falling right on top of him and trapping him underneath. Kologi then quickly realized he needed help. The problem was I could, I could not put any kind of weight on my knee. So that's when I decided I'd better push the button. Yeah, what he pushed, you see it there, was an ADT medical alert button. It notifies an operator who then contacts first responders about the incident. Within minutes, first responders showed up to his home. They tell us they were glad they got there when they did. You know, he was pretty scared laying there on the floor. You know, he didn't know if he was getting help. He didn't know when he was getting help. Today, members from the Knoxville Fire Department and those from ADT were at Kologi's home where he was able to thank everyone for their assistance. See, you know, hugs all around. And rounding out the Big Seven, it's a big day for high school student athletes and their families. It is National Signing Day, and six Farragut Admirals signed to play at the next level, including football standout Trace Corum. The Farragut standout wide receiver will be joining former Tennessee head football coach Butch Jones as a preferred walk on at Arkansas State. Corn, by the way, finished the senior season with 76 catches for over 1,171 uh, or 100 yards, 70, 17 touchdowns. We'll get the numbers right. Uh, garnering all state and all region honors. Corum said the coaching staff made him feel at home seven hours away from Knoxville. Of course, we'll have more national signing day coverage for you tonight at 11 o'clock. You can also see it at WAT.com.